Okay, exactly. 10 a.m. and uh, let's continue. Again, at any moment of time, you can ask any questions, any comments, and so on, right? So I, I, I'm, every time I'm happy to hear voices, right, in the empty room. Um, at the end of the previous class, we, we started discussing this problem, but we haven't finished. Okay, so uh, we discussed the physics of this problem, but of course we did not solve the problem. Um, and so today, let's start from this point. So we discussed, so motion of any system can be described using Newton's second law. You all know that. And of course, you all know Newton's second law. Net force acting on the mass M uh, equal, uh, leads to an acceleration A. Right? For example, I can take this mass. So this ball, is that's, that's mass in, uh, in Newton's second law. But in our situation, we have static equilibrium situation. There is no motion, right? So pretty much we can apply Newton's second law, but of course we have to put acceleration to zero. We have to make it zero in order to apply Newton's second law. As a result, we ended up, or ending up with uh, this expression. So the net force acting on this mass m must be equal to zero. And again, this is a vector equation, all right? Since we have two-dimensional situation, Okay, let me introduce a uh, coordinate system. Right, so let's say this is y and this, let's say this is my x. So we have two-dimensional system. Of course, inside of this equation, strictly speaking, if you open it up, you will end up with two equations, one along x direction, one along y direction, right? So. Uh, let's do it. And uh, also now we see what needs to be done. First of all, we just need to identify all forces acting on this mass. All forces. So let's start. Usually students tell me immediately the first force, the force of gravity, the favorite force of uh, most of students. Of course, force of gravity. So this uh, ball interacts with the earth. So, and I can write mg, right? Right. Then, second force. What else? Uh, of course, this ball interacts with the cord. And to, to model uh, that interaction, we use tension. So, uh, this is Ft, tension force. Then, what else this ball uh, interacts with? Uh, of course, with this charge. Right? So this charge Q, that charge Q, like charges, of course, uh, they're going to repel each other. So this charge is going to repel that charge. So the electric force is going to point that way in the positive x direction. So let me draw it. So this will be F electric. Okay, nothing else. So the ball interacts with the earth, cord, and this ball. That's it. So uh, now we just need to balance all these forces uh, in both directions. But before I start balancing in the directions, let me just write down this equation in, uh, explicitly using these three forces. Uh, probably I will do it here underneath. So it will be what? F tension plus uh, mg and plus electric force. I just wrote this equation vector equation explicitly after identifying all forces, right? Basically, uh, this is barely a physics 2 problem. If you remember the end of physics 1 course, at the end of the physics 1 course, you solve plenty of problems about static equilibrium, right? You remember you uh, balancing some ladders against the wall or some beams with the quartz and some person sitting on that. It's, that's, that's that problem. Except that now one of these forces uh, is an electrical force, right? Nature of the force, of one of the forces is electrical. That's it. All right, so now uh, let's balance all forces in the y direction. So now you see I'm not drawing a vector above this because now I'm dealing with components, y components of all these forces. So let's start. We'll continue, right? Um, uh, tension, y component of tension. 
since this angle is theta, this angle is also theta by geometry because we have two vertical lines and one straight line intersect them. So now y component of this tension, it will be this. This is the component, right? So it will be uh, ft since we need to find side adjacent to the angle. So cosine function must be used. So it's ft times cosine of the angle. And look, this component points in the positive x, positive y direction. So it must enter the equation with plus. So it will be ft times cosine of angle theta. Then electric force doesn't contribute anything to the uh, in the y direction because it's purely in the x direction. And then mg, you see mg straight down, negative y direction, so it must enter the equation with minus. Again, guys, if something needs to be clarified more, okay, tell me. Right. Okay, so that's the equation number one. Let me put one. Now, let's balance all forces in the x direction. So, let's do the same uh, in the x direction. Okay, I will start with the electric force. I usually prefer to start with uh, terms which are positive. I just don't like when the first term is negative. Kind of. Again, it's not wrong. It's minor compulsion. All right, so electric force points that way, positive x direction. So, I have to enter that term into this equation with plus. So it will be plus Fe, electric force. Then force of gravity doesn't contribute anything because it's a pure y uh, force in the y direction and the tension. So let's find tension, x component of tension. So I need to draw this uh, vertical line and that's the component. You see that component points in the negative x direction. You remember in the previous class the discussion about pluses and minuses of the components? Yeah, again, we can apply it here. So, and again, since we're not using conventional angle, we use convenient angle, uh, so we have to put that minus uh, manually. So, uh, we'll put minus, and so in order to find that side, this angle is theta, so we need to use sine function because we're finding side opposite to a chosen angle or given angle, given angle. So minus, uh, right, Ft times sine of the angle. And that's it. So uh, it must be equal to zero. So these two forces must balance each other out. So now we have a system of these two equations. So we're almost uh, done with physics except for. Usually at this point I would ask how many unknowns are there in this system. Because you remember, in order to solve a system, number of equations must be equal to number of unknowns. Definitely the first unknown is a tension force. We don't know that. Angle is given, mass given, g we know, uh, uh, angle again is given. But inside of the electric force, there are still plenty of information. We need to reveal that information. Let's write down explicitly expression for the electric force, right? And only then we will be able what is inside. See, we will be able to see what is inside of this electric force. So let's reveal that information. F electric equals. Basically, this force, of course, comes from an interaction of two point charges, point charges. So we can use Coulomb's law without hesitations, right? So it will be K, Q times Q and divided by the square of the distance between them, right? So it will be K. Q times Q divided by the uh, square of the distance between them, right? And now let's reveal what is inside, what is R. Okay, R, it's uh, again distance between point charges, so it's uh, this distance, that's R, right? You see, it's my R, small r, distance between charges. And because of this symmetry, you see, the whole picture is symmetrical relative to this vertical line. So this side, or okay, yeah, this distance, and this distance are exactly the same. Okay, my picture is slightly distorted, but 
Of course, you understand that. All right, so uh, these and these are the same, right? So let's find, for example, this distance. Look at this triangle, this point, this point, and that point, right? So it's a right triangle. And we need to find this side. In that triangle, we know hypotenuse, L, right? And we know that angle, which is op opposite relative to this side. Right? So this side will be equal L times sine of that angle. So it's equal to L times sine of the angle. Right? And exactly the same, this side will be equal to exactly the same expression because of the symmetry, right? So this will be also L sine theta. So as a result, R will be equal to L sine theta. Right? So 2L sine theta. So that's what we need over here. Uh, 2L sine theta. Okay, I will close my explanation box. And so now let me write, uh, let's put all together. So it's a K Q squared divided by 2L sine theta to the power of 2. Okay, so now that's what uh, we have to put instead of electric force. So now let's start counting or continue counting unknowns in our system of two equations. Now we see what is inside of electric force. So unknowns are, of course, tension. And in this expression, K, of course, universal constant, L is given, angle is given, and charge. So in our system, we have uh, two unknowns, tension and charge. So it means that we have a system of two equations with two unknowns, and at this point I can say, Physics is over at this point. The rest is algebra. You have to solve just a system of two equations with two algebraic equations, with two unknowns. What can be easier than that? Of course, all of you at this level um, uh, can do that comfortably, easily. Right. So let's do it. So, all right, from the first equation, because there is no charge in the first equation, we can solve it for tension. Right. So mg goes to that side with plus, that cosine will be dropped to the, in the denominator, and we will get the tension. So I will write, um, from the equation one, we can get that uh, tension equals to mg divided by uh, cosine theta. So from this equation, of course, we can get that. And now plug it in the second equation in order to eliminate uh, the first unknown. So and now, put it in the second equation, right? So now if we plug it here, and instead of electric force, now I will just rewrite equation number two. Let me write uh, two, the arrow, and instead of electric force, I will write this mass, right? So it will be uh, k uh, q squared divided by this denominator sine theta to the power of 2. So it's this electric force. Now minus. Instead of Ft, I will plug expression from the first equation. So minus, um, it will be what? Mg divided by cosine theta. So that's our tension. And still in front, we have sine function. And it is equal to 0. So, one unknown Q, we just need to solve this equation for this Q. Again, let me emphasize, so that uh, that's our unknown question mark. Again, sine versus cosine is going to give us tangent. Okay, let me show that. This, if we combine this, it's going to give us a uh, tangent of theta, right? So now, I'm not going to move terms around, I will just write down uh, expression for Q. At this point, you should be able to do it easily, right? So this term will go to that side with plus. Then this square will go to the numerator. This K will go to the denominator. And then we will take square root of everything, right? So as a result, you will end up 
uh, q equals this will be without square because we have square and then after taking a square root we will get oi i'm crashing my system <laughs> all right uh, so we will get uh, 2l sine theta times square root of uh, this will be mg times tangent of the angle and divided by this k right so that's the expression let me check uh, my notes uh, compare with my notes yeah it's, of course it's, it's it's correct so everything is given uh, don't forget convert grams to kilograms all right uh, then that's it and of course also check your calculator that your calculator is set for example uh, to degrees because very often calculator is in radians, students calculating, try using, uh, calculating, um, I know, sine or cosines of uh, angles in, in degrees, right? Very also common mistake. So careful. All right, so this will give you 0.75 microcoulombs. So that's the answer. Okay, now. Again, guys, if you need to, if you want me to clarify something, um, describe more, okay, tell me. Uh, very similar problem will be in your homework, extremely similar, right? Except uh, charges will be given and you will have to find angle. So that's the problem um, 62. So let me write underneath for uh, homework Problem 22.62. Very similar. You will have to find angle. And again, a diagram will be very similar. Again, the idea the same, right? Equations are very similar. Except when you get to this equation, system of equations, two equations, and you will have to find angle, it will be ridiculously difficult to find angle if you don't use this assumption. The problem says, assume that the angle is small. Most of you are familiar, if a variable value is small, then we can use what? Approximately. We can use Taylor expansions. Right. All right. Um, let me write Taylor expansion. Again, some of you are familiar with Taylor expansions, some of you not, but soon you will learn that. Right. And according to the Taylor expansion, if theta is small, then uh, sine of a small angle is equal to approximately to the angle itself. But be careful now. It, can, it's, it is true only if the angle is in radians. Radians. So it cannot be used if an angle is measured in degrees, only in radians. So when you solve the problem, right, for angle, so your answer is going to be in the radians, not in degrees, right? And if a master in physics wants to see an answer in degrees, convert it. It shouldn't be a problem for you, right? Okay, so then next, uh, cosine of a small angle is approximately equal to one. And then tangent, uh, tangent of a small angle is approximately equal to the angle itself, again, in the radians. If you ask me, what does it mean small? There is no strict definition. It depends oh, how desperate you, for example, maybe even five degrees for some, uh, in some research or in some calculations, if you're desperately to get at least something, right? And uh, okay, you can say, okay, five degrees, why not? I can still uh, use that. But of course, it will give you a very crude uh, result, very rough, right? Uh, so it depends. It depends on um, what you want to get. It depends what you have. But of course, the smaller uh, value of theta, the uh, better accuracy uh, right, of this approximation. So that's what you will need for this problem. Right. Uh, the rest, very, very similar. Okay, so I mentioned this, and now uh, let's prepare ourselves for the next problem. 
and uh, we need to review electric field. We're still slightly ahead of a lecture class, right? So I haven't finished introducing electric field uh, yesterday, so we will finish it uh, tomorrow. So as a result, I will review something and add some new stuff because we will need it today, right? We will need it in today's class. Uh, so first of all, uh, let's review the definition of the electric field. Uh, so let's assume that we have, uh, I don't know, point charge Q capital, right? This point charge creates an electrical aura around itself, which extends all the way to infinity. Pretty much it fills up the whole space. So, and if you want to measure or detect the electric field at, at a certain point, let's say at this point, at a distance r from the uh, charge Q capital, then what you do? You take a, a probe charge, put it there, measure or calculate force acting on this probe charge, and then after dividing that value of force on the value of the probe charge, you will get the electric field, right? We discussed that in the previous uh, lecture. So that's how we define the electric field. So let me write it here. So electric field equals uh, force on a Q probe divided by the value of the probe charge. So that's uh, the definition of the electric field, right? So that's how we define electric field. You can apply it uh, to find the electric field of any electrical system, right? But of course, we also imposed some restrictions on uh, the value of the probe charge. You remember, first, it must be positive. Second, it must be small so that you wouldn't disturb your uh, system significantly, right? And two restrictions. So first restriction. Uh, Q probe um, positive and the second Q probe must be small, right? Okay, so now uh, we introduced a new very important quantity but there is no special unit. So whatever you see in this formula, what? Units of force, newtons, units of charge, Coulombs. So the units of electric field, newtons divided by coulombs, right? Uh, <clears throat> so what's next? I think now uh, it's uh, probably we can find, yeah, <clears throat> uh, we can write down the expression, the formula. Uh, which can be used to find the electric field of a point charge. So basically, let's apply that formula for the point charge. What, 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 that's what I drew over here, right? And since we know the Coulomb's law, if you apply, plug the expression for the Coulomb's law, it's a, a K Q capital times Q probe divided by the square of the distance Coulomb's law. And then divide by the value of the probe charge, of course, you will end up with this. <coughs> All right, so E... Uh, equals k q divided by the r squared. So that's the expression for the electric field created by this point charge q capital at the distance r from that point charge. So again, but be careful, it's only this expression can be used to find the electric field of a, created by a point charge. Because sometimes I can see on the final exam there's a system, I don't know, a capacitor or something else. And student just, some students just grab that formula and start using it to find the electric field created by that system. No, 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 no. This, is, this can be used only to find the electric field of a point charge, created by a point charge. Right. Um, <clears throat> so... Okay, maybe I will write, uh, so it's an electric field of uh, a point charge. Point charge Q. Of course, at a distance R small. Right. Then, uh, next, electric field is invisible. <laughs> All right. So, uh, of course, in order to make... Um, our life kind of easier, right, uh, more pleasant. Of course, it's better to 
come up with some lines, with some tools which can be used to visualize electric field, right? And in physics, um, electric field lines were introduced in order to visualize electric field. Right, so let me write, I will put a small bullet. So uh, electric field lines are used to visualize to visualize electric field to visualize e right okay so now let me uh, uh draw let me draw uh electric field lines only of point charges positive and negative because we will need it uh today so if you have uh for example uh positive point charge of course it creates electric field of course expression uh, this expression can be used to find uh, the magnitude of the electric field. But again, uh, electric field lines, which we use to visualize electric field in this case, is this. Uh, so basically it's a straight lines which start on the charge and go to infinity. Tomorrow we will uh, talk more about these electric field lines and why they look like this. Right. All right, so these are electric field lines and and of course the question how much of information we can extract by just looking at these electric field lines first if you for example take this point you can see direction of the electric field again these are electric field lines but now what can we uh, uh, what can what we can find from these information about the electric field electric field so at this point for example so direction of the electric field that way given by the direction of the electric field lines then second where is the information about the electric field strength it's in the density of lines for example uh, here uh, density of lines is larger so the electric field is stronger but if you uh, step away over here density of those lines of course smaller so electric field is weaker right okay so now uh let's uh, draw a uh, similar for a negative charge electric field lines for a negative charge again it will create its own electric field and we can visualize it using electric field lines in this case all electric field lines are going to end on the negative charge And again, the same, if you take any point, you can get information about the direction of the electric field. And uh, density of lines gives you information about the electric field strength. So, of course, the closer to the charge you are, the stronger electric field, because density of lines is growing, right? It's getting larger. Okay, enough uh, of that, um, of the review. And now uh, let's... Um, oops. Everything is falling down. Oh, sorry, guys. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I just, yeah, I can uh, hear you. I just bent myself and I bent the, uh, the uh, plug into the Wi-Fi mic. Damn it, right? It's kind of a strong pin and I, with my body, I just bent it and afraid that I might. I was afraid that I damaged it. I need to be careful. All right. Okay, good. <clears throat> uh, so now let's look at one problem. It's a 23.4. Right. Uh, we'll probably start erasing this. Yeah. It should be enough. What do we have here? <clears throat> Two charges, uh, and we need to find the net electric field at a particular point. Okay, so let's uh, let me draw the picture. So the top one is positive, 
Okay, let me estimate the amount of space I might need. So this, yeah, it should be enough. Mm. So let's say this is the positive charge. I will label in a second. Uh, then uh, over here below there will be negative charge. Right. Then, okay, yeah, I can label probably. So it's a, a Q, this is Q2. Three nano coulombs, N small, nano, right? And this one uh, negative, Q1 is minus six nano coulombs. Then some geometry is given. So let me draw a few auxiliary lines, this dash line, and then this dash line. And this is a point P. We need to find the net electric field at that point P. So then some geometry is given. Let's say this distance is B and this distance is A. So now let me write over here. So B, or let me start with A. A is 10 centimeters, which is 0.1 meters. Again, at the end we will have to convert to meters. So I do it, I did it immediately. Then uh, B is five centimeters, of course, which is 0 0.05 meters. Yeah, and what we need to find, let me write down. So find uh, electric field at point P. So at this point, okay, let me draw uh, another auxiliary line. You know what, uh, since we're going to deal with vectors, let me introduce immediately coordinate system before I forgot it, right? Uh, coordinate system, I will point at the point, I will position at the point where we want to find electric field. So let me introduce it. So this will be uh, y and this is x, right? Okay, and now we can discuss. <coughs> so first, physics. Physics is quite simple. First, uh, for example, that positive charge, Q2, it creates its own electrical or electric field filling up the whole space, right? And of course, there will be some contribution to the uh, net electric field at that point P. So we'll have to find that contribution. Then, of course, this negative charge, independently of the first one, creates its own, uh, creates its own uh, electric field. Again, filling up the whole space. And of course, there will be some contribution to the point P. So we will have two contributions, two vectors. Of course, we will have to add them up in order to find the net electric field. The ideology, mathematics, almost everything is very, very similar to the problem which we discussed uh, in the previous recitation class. It just in the previous class, we had to deal with forces. At that point, we had some charge and we wanted to find the net force acting on, this on that charge. But now over there, there is no any charge. We need to find the electric field. But, but from the mathematical point of view, it's extremely similar. All right, and you will see, we will, when we start actually solving problems, you will see that um, the strategy of the solution will be extremely, extremely similar. So now let's, make a, let's draw a nice picture because we want to see those directions of those vectors. So let's draw. Let's start with the positive charge. So positive charge, let's draw a contribution to the net electric field at the point P. And in order to do that, let's use electric field lines. All right? So basically, uh, this point P on this picture, if I sort of draw it, it's, it's here somewhere, right? So this is a point P, right? So the electric field, you see, points that way. So if I draw it here, basically electric field, is that way, right? So let me draw it. So that's, uh, this is second charge, so it's uh, E sub two. Basically I can, for example, of course I'm not going to draw it because it will make picture very messy. I can draw these electric field lines, this way, this way, that way, this, that, 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 right? But of course I'm not going to do it. We just need to draw only that. Vector, electric, representing electric field, E2. 
Now let's do the same with the negative charge. But now it's a this picture. And our point P is basically, uh, if I sort of move it here, it's probably somewhere over here. So that's our point P, right? So electric field will be towards that negative charge. So I can draw it here towards the negative charge. But of course, now I will still keep the red color, not the uh, blue one. All right, so this will be E sub 1, E sub 1, electric field created by uh, charge Q1, right? So, and now, principle of superposition. We just need to add them up as vectors. So that's our electric field, which uh, we have to find, right? Okay, so now, uh, after, the, uh, after this, let's discuss the strategy of the solution. Very similar to the problem from the previous class. Can we find magnitude of this vector? Why not? It's, uh, this electric field is created by a point charge, so we can use this formula. K, Q, uh, true absolute value of Q2, right? So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, right? Because we know the direction. I just want to know the strength of that electric field. So we can use, elect we can find the magnitude. Then components, like the previous class, exactly the same uh, strategy. Components, of course, we can easily find because it's pure in the X direction. Now we have to do the same with E2. Magnitude we can find again using this formula. Again, we will just use absolute value of Q1 because we want to know just the strengths. We see the direction. We will take care of the direction later. Right? And then we will have two vectors written in a component form, adding two vectors in a component form, piece of cake. You add X components and Y components, and that's it. But of course, we will have to also find magnitude and direction of the net, of the net electric field like we did in the previous class, but with forces, now with electric fields. Okay, so now after this, uh, let's actually get into the details. Okay, maybe I will uh, draw some line and uh, first small bullet. So let's take care of E2. Why not? Let's start with the positive charge. E2 equals, of course, it's a K. Uh, Q2, absolute value of Q2, but it's positive, so absolute value doesn't do anything. And divided by the square of the distance from the charge to the point in question. So in this case, it's B. B squared. B squared. And of course, don't forget, B must be in meters. Right. Okay, and again, don't forget that nano, 10 to the power of minus 9, don't make, don't make that... A silly mistake, right? So if you uh, calculate, you will end up with 10,800 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so now we can easily write down components of this uh, vector. Okay, this is magnitude, right? Magnitude, again, let me emphasize. So it's a magnitude the strength of the electric field. And now components E2x, since the whole vector is in the x direction, so all this 10,800 is in the x component. And of course, the y component is zero for, for an obvious reason. Okay, let me frame it again with green because it's a, uh, not the final but important preliminary result. Now, let's do the same uh, for E1. Again, you see, in the previous recitation class, we've done exactly the same steps, but we dealt with forces, now with electric fields. What a big deal. From the mathematical point of view, mathematics doesn't care about the nature of these um, vectors. So E1, again, K, absolute value of Q2, K, Again, I'm dropping all the pluses, or all the minuses, because uh, we see the directions. We will take care of that direction when it's needed. Now, I just want to know the absolute value. And the distance is 
r squared. So this distance r again from now discharge to the point p. So that's r. Okay. So now, of course, we need to uh, calculate that r, but it's very simple because we have to, we have to deal with the right triangle. So it's this point, that point, that point. It's a right triangle, right? So hypotenuse it's a square of this plus square of that. So r equals to square root of a squared plus uh, b squared. So a is 10, b is 5, okay, in centimeters. So 100 plus 25 and then square root. Square root of 125 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters. First, I calculated in centimeters, and then I just added 10 to the power of negative 2. All right, uh, so now everything is given. Again, don't forget to square this, All right? And, and so if you calculate that, you will end up with uh, 4,267.2. Again, there are no special units, just newtons per coulomb. So magnitude. And so now we need to find components of this vector. Uh, in order to find components, like in the previous class, we need to introduce one of the angles. Either this one or that one. They're equally good. There is nothing wrong with either of those. I use this angle, theta. So now uh, we need to find that angle. Again, using the same right triangle, this one. right. Uh, I will use tangent function. Tangent of that angle, again, you remember, it's a ratio of opposite versus adjacent. So uh, opposite A, adjacent B. Right? So let me make this tangent of ba -ba -ba, A over B. Wait. Tangent of theta equals um, A over B. All right, so now you can take uh, inverse tangent, and of course, uh, theta will be equal to, what's the number? 63.43. Okay, I use more sig fix for now in the preliminary steps. All right, so now once you know the angle, we can find components. Easy. All right, so I can, uh, let me use red. So I can draw this dashed line. And of course, component, x component, you see, will be pointing in the negative x direction. Again, since we are not using conventional angle, we're using convenient angle, so we have to take care of the minus manually, right? Like we've discussed in the previous recitation class. So now... Professor? Yeah. I have a quick question. Yeah. For E2, uh, sorry, for E1, uh, why did we use Q2 instead of Q1? Uh, pa, 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 just a second. Q, no, it's a E2. So no, I'm saying for E1. Ah, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, of course, it's a... Thank you. It's, of course, no it should problem. be E1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some professors usually tell the students, I've done it on purpose to check if you're following me. But of course, no, it wasn't my intention. I just <laughs> made the silly <laughs> mistake. <laughs> All right. Um, ah, yeah, so components. E1, oh, let's start with x. Again, as I said, so that component is negative. We cannot get that minus automatically, so we need to put it manually. Then value of the vector E1 and times this side is adjacent to the uh, angle theta, so we need to use cosine adjacent. Cosine of angle theta, right? Again, you can plug numbers. I will use my notes. Uh, so the answer will be minus one, 1,908 and 68. Okay, again, I use on purpose more sig fix. Of course, there's no point of keeping what six sig fix too much. But of course, you can round it down, around it off at the very end, depending on how many sig fix uh, mastering physics wants to see. So, uh, E1, Y. 
right? So E1y, it's uh, this component. And you see, again, it's uh, in the negative, but now y direction, negative y direction. So again, we have to put minus manually in front, so it will be minus uh, E1 times uh, sine of angle, because that side is uh, opposite That's x, that's y, uh, yeah, opposite. So it's a this, this side or that side, right? It's opposite to a uh, chosen angle, right? So sine. So it will be minus, and the answer is 3,800. No, it's a, uh, just a second. Oh, no, it's good, good, good. I'm looking at the right spot. Uh, 16, uh, 5, 3 newtons per coulomb, right? So both components are negative. So, and now, uh, okay, so I, now I need to put a new bullet. The last one, okay, not the last one, almost the last one. Now we need to add these two vectors. But adding is very simple because you just need to add uh, these components with that, though, that these components, right? x plus x and so on. So first, in a vector form, right, principle of superposition, so E equals E1 plus E2. So it's in the vector form, but now let's take care of the actual components. So it will be Ex equals E1x plus E2x. Again, I'm not going to write numbers. Basically, you just need to subtract these from that. And the answer is positive 8,891. And I'll still keep more sig fix because I will keep, we'll have to find the magnitude. Right, so then E sub y, so it's a E1y plus E2y equals, in this case, E2, no, yeah, E2y is zero, so pretty much the whole uh, component is here. So it will be minus 3816, uh, 53 newtons per coulomb, right? Okay, I'll probably move to this side. Do we still have, yeah, a couple of minutes, awesome. Moving nicely. Okay, let me separate that intro again at this point you can say for i found uh, i know components of the net electric field what else do you want but sometimes you still wants to see for example or know you wants to know uh, magnitude of the net electric field right so let's find the magnitude so i will put the last small bullet of this problem so magnitude of E, right. It's like, uh, I'm not going to redraw a picture. You remember from the previous recitation class, we've done exactly the same, but for the force, right? So, uh, of course, magnitude of E, it's a square root of the uh, square of the X component plus square of the Y component. Basically, we applied Pythagorean theorem. Right, because components EX and EY are just a um, sides of a, tri a right triangle, 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 right, and again, I'm not going to plug numbers, uh, I will just look at the answer, it will be 9,675.8. Eight. Okay, so the last uh, line, and we'll call it a day. So now, uh, direction. And again, direction uh, relative to uh, plus x axis, right? So uh, let's introduce this angle phi, right? like in the previous class. So let's use this angle phi to define direction of the uh, net field, electric field. 
And I will use tangent. Right. Tangent of that angle phi. It will be opposite side and opposite side. It's uh, this white y component, right? Absolute value, again, absolute value I'll be using, right? Because we're just looking at the triangle and just need to take opposite side and divide it by the, by the adjacent side. Opposite side is y component, e sub y, and divided by e sub x. So you can take inverse, and phi will be equal to 23.23 degrees. And again, I'm not supposed to answer, I mean to leave an answer in this form. I need to add additional piece of information, right? Because our vector E is in the fourth quarter, not in the first one. So I need to add either below plus x, I think that's what uh, book says in mastering physics, so I will write uh, below plus x axis, or you can say uh, clockwise from plus x. We discussed it in the previous uh, recitation class, these um, details. Okay, guys, so if you have questions, right, uh, go ahead. Uh, otherwise, I will see you yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow will be the lecture. Okay, I'm still here, so I don't have now a class. So you can ask me as many questions as you want. Let me stop the recording. Mm -hmm.